Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at the Zim Pen. Zim, by the way, is a JavaScript Canvas framework to code creativity. It's powered by CreateJS, which is what Adobe Animate experts do. So that's all this works. And we've shown you in earlier tutorials, the very first one, how to set up Adobe Animate with Zim, or Zim with Adobe Animate, and you can import the Zim Shim. And we could code and animate, so we'll see a bit of that as we go here in this tutorial. We're looking at pen, which is a control. So if we go under the docs here, we can look up controls and see all of the, the various controls, pages, grids, wrappers, beads, layout, and then swiping, motion controller, game pads, physics, all sorts of things here. Various effects and parallax, flipper, book scrambler, scroller, Emitters, generator, we should look at the generator. Pen, that's what we're looking for. Uh, sound wave, synth, and, and even VR. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at the pen. So we'll open that up right there by clicking on that. And that can tell us uh, the various features of the pen through the parameters there. We have an example. We can see some examples here as well as um, the parameters, the methods, and the properties that are available and the events for when we stop drawing, paper changes, etc. So there's a pen is quite an advanced um, class there. And here is an example where we're animating the pen along a path. That looked cool. We saw some different different pens. Here's the kite tail. We can set the sizes for this the, the kite tail as well. Uh, oh. How does that look? Oh. So now they're a bit fatter and skinnier. You see that? Uh, there's also a spread. We can um, change colors like so. And then there's different types as well. So here's a city. Whoop. We made a city. Have we set these? These aren't set to be draggable, but they can be. As a matter of fact, let's show you the Gen Pen. So I'm going to pop on out to Zim here under examples and gen pen is right here it looks like a pen oh there it is gen pen generative art tool this was the most advanced app that we've made uh, it's much the same there but we also have layers so we could put the city on top of that so under pens here oh well let's go to presets first under presets we'll see a city and now we've drawn the city on this layer. But if we move this down through this guy right here, like arrow down, now the city is at the bottom and the pen right here is up at the top. There's other ways that we can drag multiple layers and lock layers and stuff. That's all done with the Zim list stuff. Then there's the ability to change, to adjust aspects of the pens. So if we move to a line right here, you can see that our line is one color at the moment. But if we add another color, so now we're specifying two colors. And when we come back here, we are drawing a line that has two colors to it or more. We could also, these are locked in the size, as you can see here. But if we don't sync the sizes, then we can get this effect. That's how we kind of made those monsters. Sort of funny looking, isn't it? Um, there are other ones that give us different effects like the kite tails. And uh, I don't know, do we see some grass? So there's grass, hair, barbed wire is like the prickly stuff. Splatter. And again, if we go into pens and choose choose the ones here we could adjust the splatter so right now splatter is between these two sizes if we magnify on this we can get really really big splatter oh my gosh gosh but we maybe want to adjust the alpha of that big big splatter like so we've also got speed we could animate the scale ah oh, and it's just so so beautiful and that's what well, let's just do one animation of a scale how about on um, the kite tail, for instance. So what we'll do is we'll sync the, the, the kite tail sizes here. 
Um, okay, so that it all comes in kind of as one size. Make it a bit bigger to start. And then we're going to animate the scale. So uh, what does this do? Oh, that's in the time. So that's the time. No, this is the time right here. And this is how much we're animating the scale, I guess. All right, and, let's, and there's an ease as well. Right now we're rewinding. So let's see what this gives us. Under the gen pen, we can clear. Clear does each layer, so you got to go to each layer, clear the layer. All right, you ready? <laughs> All right, that's a little bit too much scale, I would say. So we come on back here and decrease the scale. We could choose the colors as well um, for that. So we've decreased the scale, clear this. Isn't that wild? And now let's try um, how about changing the, the ease instead of rewind. Uh, well, actually you can change the ease too, but there's uh, rewind. Let's clear this, have a look. So now we can um, make these sort of strange vases or something. How do I do that? There we go. Looks like people's heads upside down, lampshades. <laughs> they, they all started that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll go the other way. Let's clear that again. Try going down this time. Oh, lampshade men. <laughs> we actually made an NFT that was based on this, where you could, that people could adjust interactive NFT. They could adjust some dials and stuff and get different lepton lamp lords. It was called. <laughs> that was it. Funny. Okay, you get the idea. So that that's quite advanced, and we've made some fun things with that. You can find those fun things under the generative art. It was called Gen Pen. We do want to come back and look at the generator. If we scroll on down there. So those vases were made with Gen Pen. Now you recognize that, don't you? I think we had some other examples down in here too somewhere. No, maybe not. No. But we had one that had. Uh, a spaceship, but I guess we took it off. And what else was it? The um, there's a spaceship. We also had the robot that you saw back there. We did a whole series of of the robots. Back an example of these guys. Very easy to make. Okay, let's uh, go in and just try a basic pen in Adobe Animate. So we'll go to Animate now. We'll start up a new file. A very high template. We'll bring in, we could bring in our HTML import new Zim Shim there. But we've already got it set up so that we make some other adjustments too, all within this little preset that we made in the first one. So we're going to import that preset. And we made that in the first tutorial. That sets up our Zim Shim, sets up a few basics things here. And go OK. Let's save this file. File save as. Not number 19, no, but number 20. Ooh, how about that? The pen. Pen.fla. <clears throat> we hit the F9. Sorry, I don't know if you've noticed, but over the last couple tutorials, I've been a bit mellow. Because my voice is gone, I've had a cough all week, sore throat and cough all week, so I'm kind of trying to relax the voice. And so, hence, I'm falling asleep. <laughs> Usually a bit more dynamic. All right, uh, what do we type up here? How about uh, this is Zim and uh, number 20, oh, not 10, 20, not 201, not yet, and we'll call this pen, like so the size of that. Generally, it's a new pen. That will get the default of uh, center that. That will get the default of uh, a just a dark line, a black line. If we want to move that about, we can animate that pen and it will follow the animation. I didn't show you that on the gen pen. It's actually a way in gen pen up at the top where you can set a path and then animate the pen along a path to, to get paths that repeat. That's actually pretty cool, isn't it? If you think about it, then you just pick up the path and move it to somewhere else, 
draw something else on it. So you can make complex paths that repeat, but with different pen features on them. I think uh, maybe Adobe might want to check out some of these, uh, <laughs> these, these extra features. Uh, put them in Photoshop. Uh, perhaps they're already there. So if we want to control this, the easiest way, though, is probably just add the pen to a motion controller. So that's what I'm going to show you. Const pen is equal to, no, that's lowercase. Just watch out. We noticed that the editor is doing something funny here. Const pen is equal to a new pen, where I type in capital letters. As soon as I type in the brackets, it's dropping it to the same name as that. It's like, you know, it's trying to be helpful, but so um, just watch out for that. It's hit me a couple times embarrassingly and <laughs> the first few times I was in the tutorial going what I never put lowercase letters for a class name what am I doing I must be really out of it <laughs> then afterwards I realized that it wasn't me doing it uh, okay anyway so there's our pen and we can then say give me a new motion controller and in round brackets we can add the pen uh, that almost works, but the press move is the best. So there is a, the default is you just click on the stage and the motion controller will send whatever, wherever you clicked to, but obviously that's not the best for drawing. Uh, there is mouse move, but that would make the pen follow your mouse all the time. And that's kind of claustrophobic. So we introduced a special one called press move specifically to help out with the pen. And now we get this. And this thing, semicolon, control enter. It's good, but it seems a little bit slow. Although I doubt you've seen any pen that's nicer than that. You know, usually when you do this from code and scratch, what happens is every little jigger, jigger, <laughs> every little jiggle, every little jiggle of the um, uh, the the mouse will make your pen go jiggle, 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 and it looks really, really bad. Um, so what we've done is automatically applied this thing called damping. And damping means don't make it go directly to where your mouse is, or finger. This would work on mobile as well. Here, here I am using, oh, <laughs> I swear this would use. Here I am using a touch screen, then it didn't work. But no, it will, I swear. <clears throat> but, um, Every little jiggle would be on there unless you had damping. So instead of going directly to where you press, you would go partway there. So if you have a damping of point 0.1, then that means go point 0.1 of the way there. And that will smoothen out the line. We also have a speed in the motion controller. Actually, this is kind of funny because the motion controller, controller has damping and speed, but the pen itself also has damping. So we've got damping on both the pen and on the motion controller. That's leading to certainly a very smooth line, but it, and not, not only that, but it's, it's kind of nice when, especially if you've got a finger uh, going, it's nice when the, um, what you're drawing isn't directly underneath your, your finger, so that you can kind of see what you're doing. So I actually don't mind a slow pen like this to, to kind of let me have a bit of thought and see where I'm going and get these nice smooth curves. But uh, sometimes people want it a bit faster. That's easy to do. So we could either reduce the damping in either of these. As your damping approaches one, it becomes no damping. So it's sort of a little bit awkward how that works. It just seems to be how it is, how it's been done in the industry. When we use damping, the lower the number, the more damping it is. The higher the number, the less damping it is. So you see what I mean? <laughs> so usually high numbers as they get higher, higher damping, but no, that's not the case. So um, for the pen, if we put the damp parameter at one, that means the pen won't have any damping at all. Let's see if we notice. Control enter in here. I don't quite notice too much. Let's try setting the speed of the controller. So we'll go to the Zim Duo technique here on the controller itself as well. That's when we use these squiggly brackets and then we say the target. That's what we're targeting. 
uh, to control, and then this is the type. So that should be the same. We'll drop this down so we can stay on the screen here. So here we have speed. Let's try increasing the speed to, say, 100. See, see what difference that makes. Okay. Yeah. So there we still have some damping on the pen, but the speed is telling me, you know, try and get there almost as fast as you can. Okay, so if we took the damping off, here, damp colon one, that means uh, basically no damping. There it is. So it, it's quite fast. Um, so let's try a damp of 10. In other words, you just kind of play around with this a little bit. I would leave the damp on one of these things. Try leaving the damp on the pen. See what that work looks like. It's still pretty slow at 10. 10 might be the, the default. I'm not sure. Maybe it was the damp in here. Damp colon, mm, let's try 0.5. That's, that's hardly any damping in the scheme of things, 0.5. The default damp is 0.1. Yeah, so that's that's not enough damping. That's not enough damping for us, I don't think anyway. Let's try a faster speed and a damp of 0.2, and let's see how we're sitting now. That looks that looks okay. What do you say? Okay, and then there's the various pen parameters as well. That you, can play around with. So this is the, I think it's just type, it might be pen type, I can't remember. Uh, kite tail, maybe. Let's try pen type. So there's, there's the kite tail, like so. We can set it to not be draggable. We can set its size. Note when we set its size though, it doesn't randomize the size. And that's fine, that, that gives us that option. But we can also do something like this. Size. If we put in an array like this, 20 and 50, then it's going to be a pen that has either 50 or 20 randomly. These are ZIMV values, they're called. If we add more values in there, that would happen. Same with color. If we had color, we could give an array of color and it would pick randomly. But if we pass in a series like this of 50, 20, or Zim V values. So now we have a series. Then it will do the size in order. Do you see how important the Zim V values are? Really, 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 really important. Makes Zim very powerful for things like emitting objects, tiling objects, emitting uh, pens, uh, beads, etc. Intervals. All those can use Zim V values. And then if you wanted your colors, uh, you could do that too. Uh, but you could also pass in a Zim V value that is called the min max, min colon 20, and max of colon 50, like that. So now what happens is Zim will pick a color, be not a color, sorry, a size between that. So it's up to 50 and down to 20. You can do a series two and get the series to do something like that. There's a bunch of, you can also reverse series. So you can go forward on series and reverse series. You can animate the size of the pen. Um, it's called something special. Do you, do you want to see that? That's kind of really cool. That's as soon as we animated the pen size, we went, oh my God, that is so cool. And that's when we decided to make gen pen is because, that, because it was so cool to see an animated pen size, um, we went and made a tool that did it. 
Okay, so let's just set the size to say 50 here. Um, that's the pen, and then we can animate the pen. Dot animate. And in here, we will go to the Zim Duo techniques, the props. It's not size, if I recall, but something special like percent size, I think. Percent size um, works better. So percent size, ah, th that was it. So it would work if the size were only one size, that's great. But when the size is a series of random sizes like this, if I just go and animate the size, then all of a sudden it animates to a specific size. But if I do the percent size, then it keeps the proportions here, but just makes all of them bigger or all of them smaller. Um, and so you can keep the, the gradations in a sense that's happening, but then expand or contract uh, as you want with the percent size. So percent size, this is in percentage, so we'll go 200. 200 is big. And then we have our choices to the time for this, time of maybe in two seconds, maybe one second, that's default. And we have a rewind, so we can rewind that true. And let's loop that true. And so what will happen is the pen percent size will animate in time and rewind in loop as, as we drag it around. <laughs> in theory. <laughs> Didn't quite do it though, did it? So let's check for an error. F12. Uh, it's interesting. We solved that, but maybe the pen has that message has come back in the pen. I'll try and solve that again. So, nothing happened. Let's have a look. Let's check to see if percent size is something, is the property of the pen. So we would need to animate, make sure it's a property of the pen. Go to the docs, look up pen, and scroll on down until there's the methods. Here are the properties. Paper and writing size, size factor, okay. So it's called size factor and default one. So that's going to be, one will be 100%, two will be twice as big. So get or set a factor to multiply by it. No, size factor, size factor. Not 200, <laughs> that would be bad. Just maybe three times as big. Control enter. Yeah, it's doing it. All right, I want a bit. Uh, I want a bit more speed on that. Uh, but we did uh, the pen. We only made a specific size, and we made it 50. Let's start off more like a 20. Make it three times as big and increase our time. Well, reduce our time, I suppose. So increase our speed. I think we can increase the scale size, can't we? But you, you see what's happening is we're starting to, we're starting to get it. It's also looking a little bit chickity jaggedy. You see how the bends are a little bit not, not quite as smooth. I mean, that might be the style you want, but we can get it to be smoother than that by uh, bringing back some more of the damping that, that we had before. So go back to our point one damping. So as you're making art, you probably want it smoother. You're not really caring about getting there quickly. You're trying to make a good looking drawing in the end. So the easing will help. We might be able to slow down the speed as well and I think we're you know we'd be better off. We'll increase that size factor. Size. Where was it? Size factor about to 10. Let's have a look. <laughs> well all right, we've got this sort of strange hourglass look happening here. Oh, note that it cached that and cropped it there. You can turn off that kind of stuff. You can make the, the crop rectangle a bit bigger than that so that if you are dragging your art around, it doesn't, uh, doesn't do that. Hmm, so how about a little bit smaller? Something like eight. Uh, this looks pretty nice. Not not even not in kite tail. Looks pretty nice as a pen, as or as a just plain.
plane. I can't remember what the plane one's called. Mine, I think it is. We'll keep kite tail. And what else was I wanting to do with that? Just reduce it a little bit, maybe. Let's put it on black. So we'll go over here. Okay. There we have black. Hello. And I'm starting to make these sort of strange looking characters that are all looking at one another. You can do some neat, like, uh, little spirally effects. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, once I had made angels with pens. Don't they then? Don't they all of a sudden look like some sort of uh, creature, creaturely angel type things? <laughs> That's great. It's like wow. Um, let me just show you that angel maker. Back on Zim, and we'll call that a day. I'll have one last peek at the at the code here, just in case you you missed that. We made a pen. We were adjusting the damping. We can play with the the type as well. We're animating the size factor to eight times in this time, so you can change that. You could also wiggle a pen, but anyway, uh, we're rewinding and we're looping. We're moving it with a motion controller, targeting the pen and adjusting some speed and damping. Okay. And with that, we got that pretty neat uh, feature already. So if I look under examples here, it was, uh, looks like an angel. I think it's the last one here. Yeah, angel maker. So we made a Zim book. I've shown you tutorials on the Zim book before. There's a Zim book of some of the angels from my family. Oh, nice. And the cats. <laughs> okay, but there was a make your own angel right here. Ooh, so it automatically uh, mirrors it, and that's how we get our our angels. Wow, isn't that neat? And then we saw also how to save these types of things. So if I hit save, there it just loaded my angel. There's my angel, and I can choose what I want to add to that when I save it out. But that's an image that would be downloaded to their mobile device or their or their um, computer. Wow, I am Dr. Abstract. These have been Zim tutorials for Adobe Animate. You're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord, and say hi to us. We'd love to see you there. One day I'll get my voice back and I can be a bit more animated myself. <laughs> right, bye-bye. Have a great day or night.